So here we are in the Pinner Memorial Park and behind me is the Heath Robinson Museum. Now I'm a huge fan of Heath Robinson. What he does is he puts together strange things to make ridiculously complex machines that perform a simple task like pushing a button or putting jam on your toast. And of course there is the American version which is Rube Goldberg and equally I'm a fan of Rube Goldberg. The idea of putting together things that you wouldn't think about is what I think is essential to both Heath Robinson and Rube Goldberg. I mean, they're humorous, so it's rigged up to an absurdum and they carry it forward to make it silly. But the essence of what they're doing, I think, is totally es essential to what it is to invent something. So if you have a think about what we've been doing, then in video 2359, we had a look at the Wolfram Drive with its lever principle. Then, in video 2356, we looked at the rhodomite bearing. And the rhodomite bearing as a linear bearing led us to the rotary version of it. And from the rotary version of the rhodomite, we actually went to something called the scroller roller in video 2358 and put this together, which is pretty cool, actually. I quite like that. Now, if you remember, I said that um, bearings and drives are actually very similar, and usually what can act as a bearing can also act as a drive. And we did that when we looked at things like the NIF drive, which is a, a ball bearing friction drive, essentially. And what occurred to me is that they put this, the scroller roller, together in an almost Heath Robinson kind of way with the Wolfram drive, would we get an interesting drive? Well, I don't really know the answer to that. And when I don't know the answer to something, my go-to position is to give it a go and see. So what I did was I printed a whole load of rollers up. This is going to be the drive roller, and these are going to be the edge rollers. You'll notice this is half the size of this. So we should get some kind of gear ratio just by putting those together. And of course I've printed four of them and a whole load of belts. So now what I want to do is put the belts around these rollers and just make sure it works as a scroller roller before we add the Wolfram drive bit. Okay, so now we've got it banded up. I just want to point out the sequence of banding to you. There are eight bands. If we take this first band and call that A, rotate it 90 degrees, position B, 90 degrees, next step up, position C, 90 degrees, posi position D. Notice on this one, it's now in the reverse. That's also in D, but that's in C, that's in B, and that's in A. So this A, B, C, D, D, C, B, A helps take the twist out of these rollers, and that was pointed out to me by a friend of mine. And now we've got it all done, we need to put in the Wolfram drive bit. And to put in the Wolfram drive bit, we need to add additions to this. So what we're going to do is create a lever by putting a step down with these pegs, and a peg there goes in each one of these top and bottom. And of course we need a central axle. The central axle fits in that point there and glues in place. But if you look at the axle, it's got a step in it here. It's got a step in it here because we're going to use the cross roller bearings that were created in video 2326. And so we pop a cone on there, we use our bearing there, put the rollers in here, and then glue on the cone on top to make a bearing on the axle. So that's it all put together. Now remember that's the lever point. The lever has three things that people often forget one of them. It needs a fulcrum, it needs a lever, and it needs something to push against. It needs a ground that you stand on. So what we need here is a ground ring, and of course we can make that as part of the case. And that's exactly what this is. This is the case. The central bearing, this one, red one here, pushes through that centre there. And then this outer bit acts as a ground that this can push against. At the moment it's a bit too big, so what we've got is a TPU ring. And the TPU ring slots inside there, a bit of glue to hold it in place, and that will be our ground. Then we fit that and squeeze it into the ground bit. And of course we need two of them. But before we put the other ones in, we also need the output ring. So there's our ground ring glued in place, and I put a load of rollers, cross rollers, into that groove. That then slots in there, and the output ring will slot on top of that. 
Now the output ring is this big, big red ring and it also has an angular groove that takes the other side of the cross rollers, pushes on top. But inside it needs its own TPU sleeve so that it can grip. So the TPU sleeve inserts into that ring. There we go. <laughs> and then that fits closely over the rollers. When we split all those bits together, we put it in this base, and that's it. Finished, put the crank handle on, we're ready to go. I've got to mention a couple of things. At the end here, you'll see some caps that glue into the ground stroke case, and they're to prevent the bearings from coming out, and there's one either side. I've also added a little dot on here, because this as a drive, the roller drive, the scroller roller, in the patent, you will see it as a drive, and as a drive, it's very similar to a planetary gear system. Now, given the sizes of these, we'd expect the gear ratio to be somewhere like 3 to 1. So what we'll do is turn this and see what the gear ratio is. One thing to notice about these TPU sleeves is I changed the settings. The wall thickness is two layers of both the walls, and the top and bottom shell thickness is set to zero. The infill is 15% triangular, and what that means is this isn't a solid sleeve, it actually acts quite like a spring, so it'll spring in and out. Okay, so watch that dot and let's give it a few turns. So, for about one turn of this, that dot moves about that far. So I'm not sure what that gear ratio is, 10 to 1, 20 to 1. What I know it isn't is 3 to 1. It's much bigger than 3 to 1. So it isn't just this planetary arrangement that's contributing to the gear ratio. What's also contributing is that little step we put in. That little step is the Wolfram principle and it adds to the overall effect on the drive. The size of that step will really impact on what the output of this drive is going to be. So, putting together ideas from different places can lead to surprising results. Even if it's something as amusing as Heath Robinson, Rube Goldberg, or something real as combining the Wolfram Principle with a scroller drive can get you some very good results, or at least very interesting results. Now, of course, I will put all of these files onto Thingiverse, should anybody want to play around with it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.